The Solent region is home to a beautiful and important marine plant, seagrass. Seagrass beds support a wide variety of life, store carbon and reduce coastal erosion. The UK has lost around 90% of its seagrass due to human activities and disease, but restoring these underwater meadows is important for both nature and people. The Solent Seascape project is on a mission to restore the Solent seagrass. Led by experts at Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust and Project Seagrass, the project is employing new techniques and the power of community to bring the Solent seagrass meadows back to life. Welcome back to the Solent Seascape project. So far, we've built oyster reefs, created salt marsh habitat, and restored seabird nesting sites. All of that happened on the other side of the Solent. But today, I'm standing on the Isle of Wight, because tomorrow, we'll be planting brand new seagrass meadows here at the beautiful Priory Bay. In a moment, we'll be meeting Project Seagrass, who'll tell us how the plants have been prepared. But before that, let's travel back in time to see how the seagrass seeds were collected in the first place. The seeds needed to plant this meadow are collected from healthy donor meadows nearly a year before they're planted. We visited the team from Hampshire and Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust and their enthusiastic volunteers who were carefully sifting through thousands of mature seagrass plants. We are at the moment standing on Cowshot Beach on the Hampshire coast and behind me there's an intrepid group of uh, our volunteers. So the volunteers have joined us uh, for seagrass seed collection today and around this time of year in the summer they pollinate and produce seeds. We need to collect tens of thousands of seeds uh, for our next stage of restoration work, looking to around probably 80,000 seeds this summer to collect. So that involves like wading out to, to the seagrass meadows, which are quite big here, they extend quite a long way. We, we go out and look for the seagrass plants, we look for the reproductive plant, and then we pick off these spades, like seed pods, and then we put them in our box and then the nice people at the trust will take them away and rot them down and then turn them into seeds and then come the spring hopefully we'll be out here again with our corking guns and replanting them all. Hopefully you know, extending the meadows and making it healthier and healthier. So we have volunteers joining us for snorkelling and wading to collect the seagrass seeds. We wouldn't be able to do any of our seagrass restoration work in the Solent without volunteer support. Um, it's a new science and it's incredibly labour intensive, so we need a lot of hands and feet on the ground. So they're vital to the work that we're doing. We kind of see it as a community project in that sense, from surveying existing meadows to identify the health and condition, to collecting seagrass seed, which is what we're doing today, to then sorting the seed in the lab and then planting again in the spring. It's like a little tiny tic tac and it has space so we can pick that. It's the community and meeting all the new people, keeping in contact on, the, we've got WhatsApp groups, we share travel groups. It's lovely, it's absolutely wonderful thing to do, yeah. And the leaders are all right. <laughs> yeah. The collected seed pods from each volunteer are gathered up and mixed together. They will repeat this process twice a day for a week, accumulating tens of thousands of seeds. In this state, the seed pods are vulnerable, so must be kept cool and oxygenated before they are transported to the lab. And some of the pods have already begun to drop their seeds. set up we've got our system of of two tabs one with a coarse mesh on top one with a fine mesh underneath to catch the seeds that fall through the coarse mesh and now we can just put all the spades in 
Huge relief to, to finally have them all in and so they're back in seawater and can be well aerated. Um, and then we can come and check on them again tomorrow. So what's going on? What's happening here? We've now got all the spades that we collected at cow shops in um, the aquarium system. Um, so now it's starting the rotting out phase, which is really exciting. So they rot. Yes, so all the um, spades have got seeds in and over a period of eight to 12 weeks, they go through a process called rotting out, which is basically where the plant material uh, decays the seeds mature, fall out of the space and then drop to the bottom um, of this trug system. So there's two trugs with mesh netting, so the seeds are allowed to fall through this onto the bottom and then they're captured in the mesh there. It looks like there's loads in here. How many seeds do you think that are in this vat at the moment? Well, 20 to 40,000 seed I think would be uh, a good estimate. And uh, there they are, one, two, three, four, five, and that was six in that one. They need a little bit more time to mature and then, as, as Eddie said, they'll drop. Um, and so what's the next stage in the process? The next phase is that we bring our team of volunteers in again. They come and join us at the Institute of Marine Science, which is where we are now, but we go into the lab room. Um, and then they help us sort through that mulch and that seed, picking out the seed with tweezers, making sure it's nice and clean with seawater. Um, and then once we've got all the seed nice and clean, and just as it is, we can put it into our seed storage system for the winter. Come on, have a look. Yeah, can we go and have a look at that? Yes. Sounds great. After the volunteers have sorted through the seeds, we've got it out of the mulch, got it nice and clean. The seed is then brought in here into this storage system. And the seed is kept in really cold temperatures, really hypersaline, so really salty seawater. And that puts the seeds into a state of dormancy over the winter months. And then uh, we kept here until the spring when we take it out to plant. So whilst these seeds lay dormant over winter, let's find out why seagrass is so important. So seagrass is kind of a generic term for the only fully marine flowering plants. So seagrasses are plants that do everything plants do on land. They flower, they have pollen, they pollinate and they set seed and they do it all in the marine environment. Seagrass is important for biodiversity, so it provides a really important habitat for an array of marine life in the Solent. So from cuttlefish to rays, sharks, we have our commercially important fish species that visit the seagrass meadows and a lot of the fish that we eat spend some stage of their life cycle in seagrass, so really important for our marine life. They're also fantastically good at absorbing carbon, not just because they photosynthesize, but because the way they slow down the water that moves through a seagrass meadow means that they cause lots of things to drop out and get buried, full of carbon. And the other thing they do is that they absorb wave action, and so they're a natural coastal defense for us. So they save us a lot of money in what we call an ecosystem service. And now, let's head back to the Isle of Wight and learn how exactly seagrass seeds are planted. So this is where Project Seagrass are preparing the seeds ready for planting tomorrow. And through here, we're going to meet Anushka, who's going to tell me a little bit more about the process. Hi Louise, how are you? Oh, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm good. super excited to see well, what's welcome. happening. We're doing a seagrass preparation workshop today with some volunteers and they're basically preparing our two um, seagrass restoration techniques. The two planting techniques either use the seeds collected the previous year or collecting and bunching the washed up seagrass known as fragments. Fragments are basically um, offshoots of the seagrass meadow that get washed up onto the shores uh, from storm events. They dislodge from the seagrass meadow and it gives us a chance to be able to plant them back into the meadow. We bring them back and essentially fix a hessian string um, to the rhizome system and then attach to the hessian string uh, a bamboo mossing pin and essentially that acts as an anchor for us to be able to put pressure on to get it into the sediment when we're planting. And then we have the DIS, which stands for um, Dispenser Injection Seeding, which incorporates a mud mixture with the seeds. They fill these canisters and then we directly inject these into the, uh, the ground in our restoration sites. 
Once the seeds have been taken out of the cold water, their dormancy ends and the team has just a couple of days before they will start to germinate. So it's a race against time to get them in the mixture and onto the beach. Being part of making a positive difference for our local environment is amazing. Yeah, I think it's all the um, the learning that I've, you know, things that I've learned through doing this project is just amazing, and just being able to actually feel that you're doing something that actually is positive and counts. So there's a number of pressures that affect seagrass habitats and meadows. Things like catchment input, so things coming down the river can also input into seagrass meadows, such as nutrients, for example, agricultural runoff, etc. As with a lot of coastal habitats, pollution is a huge issue, causing algal blooms which suffocate the seagrass. Even making simple changes at home, such as proper waste disposal and using eco-friendly products can make a big difference. We've got two sites that we're restoring on the Isle of Wight. We've got Priory Bay and we've got Thorness, which is a muddier site, a bit of a rocky reef. And then we've got Priory Bay is our sandy site, which has got a large expanse of beach. At last, after nearly a year of preparation and hard work, it was time to plant the seagrass. Once again, this was made possible thanks to the many volunteers who turned up on the day to help. When the tide was out, Anushka ran through the protocol with the team, quadrats were laid out, and they began injecting the primed seagrass seeds into the sand. Finally, Anushka and I went to have a look at a small but very important victory from last year's trial, which incorporated a technique known as a seagrass hug. So we call it a hug because it's sort of on three axes, so it's a, a nice little cutch. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah, so this is our um, DIS technique that we've been using. This is a one-year-old growth. Um, and we've basically planted in this design where we've done the seeding by the DIS injection uh, within the quadrat. Each of the seeds produces a plant. Basically surrounding each of the axis of the quadrat, we have um, transplants and they will be sort of along each of these, basically protecting the seeds on the inside and hopefully complement each other to be able to expand the seagrass and the growth. Transplants and seeding is used um, you know, globally uh, for restoration practices, but incorporating the two um, potentially gives um, a good chance for both to succeed. It's been a really good day today, so it's always really super exciting and really rewarding when we try and get those um, seeds and those plants in the ground. Um, and yeah, it's, it's great feeling. Globally, seagrasses probably only cover you know, 0.1, 0.2% of the sea surface but they you know they, they're responsible for about 15 percent of global carbon absorption and storage so i mean they, they punch well above their weight and restoring seagrass meadows when they store carbon is a really vital part of our fight against climate change i think nature to me means connection in lots of ways um, connection throughout the whole seascape but also that connection for people and bringing that sense of community um, through nature as well. I guess nature is something that I, I enjoy personally because I love it so much and I want to be able to encourage that recovery, not just for myself, but for the planet as well. There is no other planet like ours around. We're unique. Mm. We just need to protect it 